Okay. He's clipped her ears and everything. Put a little mental on that. <laughs> Just, you can clip her on, clip her on it. Whoa. Okay, this is the the only mare that we got who's absolutely beautiful. And she could be registered. They know who her mother and sire are. They're both registered horses. She was raised by the Amish, and they never did register her. She's about 10 years old, I think. Yeah. Now, we're, if you notice, we left the rope on that halter. And that's in case she starts fussing, he has something to get a hold of her with. Because this mare is a little, a little, uh, different. He said she's not real crazy about having her back end done. Uh, she is clipped. He did clip her ears. And if you notice, there's no forelock which is really, the Amish do that a lot when they're driving because it's easier to ride with a horse. So that's more typical. It's not typical for them to do her ears, but he actually did a pretty good job of clipping her. And he really likes this horse. He even left the tips on the ears. So this guy is, uh, he's been around Somebody that's taught him how to clip the ears and leave the tips on the ears and stuff like that. Probably Henry. Maybe Henry. Uh, we've gotten three or four other horses from this guy's family, his dad. And so he called us. Uh, actually, he called us on uh, Saturday night wanting us to pick this mare up if we could. He did not know we had a trip. <clears throat> lucky him and lucky timing because... I had a trip coming down there. We were able to put her on the list and pick her up. And she's just a beautiful, beautiful mare. He said she's having trouble with trips on the road. Um, she may have gotten some sort of virus last year and made her very, very sick. But we're not 100% sure. We're going to have to have our vet look at her and see what's going on. He said it was... Really, he touch and go with her, but he really liked this horse, and he put a, a lot of time and effort into it. Quit. Unfortunately, he has a guy that's not a vet that they use that does some uh, does some pretty good work sometimes, is what I've heard. So I really don't have a vet diagnosis on what she had a year ago. If you just kind of help. Hold her, but she's a little busy. And we be careful. Rub on you her, brush her back legs. Okay. We're gonna have D hold her. Just take her off the ties, and then since she's a little fussy, putting them out in the wide open in this aisle sometimes is a little iffy. So now D's here. She can help. D's a volunteer for Saddlebird Rescue. Dee, did you notice the clip job? Yes. <laughs> Dee's personal private thing with the rescues is to try to get them clipped, all of them clipped so where they look good. <laughs> this one already had her ears done and everything. And he didn't know we were coming until yesterday morning, so he couldn't have, he must have had her that way. Because he had to go to work. Yeah, but he, we got there a little later than we said. Not much. We had fun driving around. Uh, because of time of when people could be there for us to pick up their horses, the Amish horses, we did not get to go in a logical order. And so we drove from about 10.30 until about 3.30 all over one area picking up three horses. And they're not, not very far from each other. And the roads are never straight. And they're always real curvy. And it was a 
it was an interesting day, a lot of beautiful scenery. And at one point when I went around the corner, I could see back into the trailer as I, we were around the corner, all five horses had their noses looking out, uh, and I could see them all looking there with interest. And one of the horses, and I don't know who it was, when you'd slow down and we, he would see other horses or something, would nicker and call to him. So we had a talking horse on the trailer. <laughs> Now, somebody asked how tall she is. We will get to that. We haven't gotten that far yet. She's a tall man. She's big. I don't, I know for a fact she was not in saddlebred school. So he's ridden her, but she won't have the training that other horses have. So she'll be basically have to be started as a green horse. All the dogs are guarding us now. Hey, Casey. Casey, come here. We have a, the smallest dogs think they're the guard dogs. So they get the big dogs riled up to go outside and bark at something. Oh, that was good. He said that uh, he had had problems in the past with him shooting her back in. So I had told Raimundo to be very, very careful with her because I don't want him to kick her to kick him. Our first rule is don't get any people hurt. And the second rule is don't hurt any horses. So those are the two main rules that we live by. And we're fortunate, Saddle Rescue is fortunate that um, we are professionals. Uh, everybody that handles these horses has been around horses and we have help, which is very important. A lot of times people get horses and they don't have help at home to help them get these horses when they first come in to where they need them to be. And uh, we have, of all the horses we've gotten, there's only been a handful that have been ready to go ASAP without any work. And I might even have fingers left over from that ha uh, handful. And handful means five. They come in, they all need work, uh, whether it's uh, vet work, shoeing work, getting them to handle, getting them to ride like you want them. The ones that were in saddlebred school, um, they're all trained by different trainers, so they're, none of them are trained the same. They all have different cues. They all have different quirks. And that is precisely why we have changed our program even more to be more intensely towards a training operation is because I think we can get them placed in, oh, in a place better if we know more about these horses and we spend more time. So, that being said, this mare will start on her groundwork. We will put shaft trainers on her just to make sure she's not gonna kick our, our cart, which I doubt she does, but some horses that have been on the road are very hard to drive. And I'm not saying she is. We will find that out before we put our cart on. We will jog her. She will get some groundwork on mounting and bidding so that we, kind of like you're just starting a horse out. We'll, we'll just assume she knows nothing. And uh, the more she knows, the faster we can go through the progress. Then on when our volunteers are here, uh, they have times when, when they ride these horses. We have two volunteers that come out and ride. And uh, they work under my direction. But they're, but they're not in charge of training anything. That's not their job. Their job is just... Actually, uh, it's not as fun as it looks. It's fun, and it's gratifying, but it's, a, it's way harder than just riding school horses or trained horses where you, you work for a trainer or you ride with a trainer and all their horses are similar. I think Dee can tell you that it's way harder. <laughs> and uh, occasionally Dee will come out and we will have her pop on one of my horses. I got three that are school horses and we're, I'm not using them, obviously. And I'll have her pop on them, and for her, it's like a vacation. <laughs> uh, Teresa's the same way. These are much more difficult to ride. Uh, just because they're on the road does not mean that they are beginners. It does not mean that they're calm for everything. And that's a pretty bad assumption. People think rescue means dead, quiet, broke, and rescue means they need help. They're in a desperate situation in their life. But when they feel better, and they get more food to them and more whatever, sometimes they get a little difficult to deal with.
So Pat's going to measure this horse. That's why you see things moving. And now the person that's uh, the seasick person, I don't know how you're going to cover her eye, but if you can just at least block it. So Dee's going to block it. We're going to measure her. I'm going to guess her 16, close to 16 too. Maybe a little over, but she's got high withers, but she does not have a low back, but she definitely has high withers. Sixteen two, pretty big mare, and she's got a a neck a mile long. Okay, anything else? Um, we're we're gonna clean her feet off the record <laughs> because uh, she was a little kicky the other day. So we're gonna let you go. That's our last horse, and this is uh, we raised money for yesterday, and then we have all the stuff we have to do with them and keep them and. Like this mare could be a project unless I have someone that's suitable to train her and work her, her, you know, as she is. She would not be placed in a home without somebody with professional knowledge because I know that she isn't like what everybody thinks and everybody hopes. Uh, so she's going to take a while. This is why we keep donating. We have to raise a lot of funds. If somebody we have, this is a 10 stall barn. We have five horses in here. So technically, if I had an emergency, I could put five more in here. I don't want to because I didn't, it screws up my uh, uh, quarantine status on where they are. But 10 is the most we can keep in the quarantine barn before we place up, before they can leave. And they have to stay in here the whole time. We also have placed a lot of horses, compliments to everybody being on the internet and sharing posts. We've placed, I think, five horses left here last week which opened up the whole barn for these new ones to come in which is really good so um i look forward to uh showing you more on these horses it probably will not be tomorrow but we'll try to get in maybe by this weekend some more stuff about them so thanks for joining us